Okay, we just finished the product rule. Let's check out the quotient rule. So if I have two functions, x squared and x, let's just divide them and see if we really need a quotient rule. I bet you're thinking, yeah, but we do. So if I divide these, then I take the derivative of what I divided of x, then I just get one. So if I don't need a quotient rule, then I should be able to just take the derivative of the top function the derivative of the bottom function, and I should get the correct answer, but uh, you're doing it wrong. I can't yell like he does. <laughs> so in other words, we got to figure out what the formula is. So how do we find the derivative when we're dividing one function by another? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the g of x up top here, because then I can actually use the product rule, which is what we just did. So the product rule says take the derivative of the first one, leave the second one alone, plus leave the first one alone, and then take the derivative of this. Well, how do we take the derivative of this? If you really understood the chain rule, you're going, aha, chain rule. So I'm going to do it the kind of the shortcut way, but if you did a substitution, you certainly could. I'm doing it by bringing the power down, so negative 1 comes down front. I subtract 1, so that becomes negative 2. And then times the derivative, so that's the derivative of the outside, times the derivative of the inside, which is just g prime of x. I don't know what that is. And so then I move things around. The negative goes out front. This goes up top. That being a negative power, I can bring to the bottom and make a positive. And so then where I have this, I'm going to plug that in. So that gets plugged in. And so what did I do next? So here, this is a negative one power. So I brought it down to the bottom. Okay, just continuing from up here or up here. And then this piece got plugged in. And so then here, I just simply brought the minus sign out front. So that's all I did. And then finally here, as you can see, I got a common denominator, which a lot of you guys will say you cross multiply. So if, if my common denominator is gx squared, then this one needs another gx, right? gx times gx, gx squared on the top and the bottom. And so that's where this came from. And that is my quotient rule. I had students a while back, this is kind of weird that they call this ho de ha ha de ho ho square Who calling the ho, right? It's got, <laughs> I don't get it either, but it's like you call the bottom the ho, the ho, I'm, yeah, don't go there. And the top, the high, so that's what this is saying, the derivative of the high, leave the ho alone. Um, leave the high alone, the derivative of, so you got your hoes on the corner or something. I don't get it either, but somebody taught me that. What I remember, and this one's important because that's a minus sign. The order does matter. I just say in words, the derivative of the top, leave the bottom alone. Leave the top alone, derivative of the bottom, and square the bottom. You should always square your bottoms, right? Derivative of top, leave bottom alone, minus leave top alone, derivative of bottom, square the bottom. And so just like the product rule, I just have a formula here that I'm going to use. So we just did this one where we just straight divide it, and you would. You wouldn't use the quotient rule. But to prove that we get 1, let's plug everything in. So this says take the derivative of the top, the derivative of x squared, 2x, leave the bottom alone, x, minus leave the top alone, x squared, times the derivative of the bottom, well remember the derivative of x is just 1, and then square the bottom, x squared. Now we just do all this crazy multiplication stuff, so 2x times x, 2x squared, x squared times 1, x squared, 2x squared minus x squared, x squared over x squared, and guess what? We get the same answer, equals 1. So you're just going to use this, but again, you have no idea how many students I see flip this top that they will leave the top alone times the derivative of the bottom first, and that's wrong, okay? Because of that minus sign, it has to be in this order. So let's try another one. I have, and, and this is one now that you could see you have to use the quotient rule because there's nothing you can divide. 
So I see x divided by e, e to the x, so my f of x is x, my e to the x, not e to the x, my g of x is e to the x. So I start plugging stuff in, the derivative of x, the top one, leave the bottom alone, minus, leave the top alone, times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then square the bottom. Now, if I multiply this out, I get e to the x, x, e to the x. And I separated these to kind of show you what I'm going to do because I'm going to separate my fraction, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, x, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Some of you probably wouldn't have done it this way. You would have just noticed that you can only cancel the denominator with something up on the top if you can do it to both of them. Please do not just cancel one. But that's what I'm showing you here. And so as you can see, this e to the x cancels, so I'm left with 1 over e to the x. This e to the x cancels, so I'm left with x e to the x, over e to the x. And that's it. That's the quotient rule. So as you can see with the product rule and the quotient rule, it's just plugging stuff into the formulas. But you still have to know your shortcut derivatives. Have fun.